what's up everyone welcome back to another episode of Nemeseek and today we are going to talk about another image that came out but I don't have an article to go with this image to give any extra context to it unfortunately but I do have the website which has just been updated and it announces that obviously the November 24th release date which we already knew but it has like a little you know bio here or a little synopsis for the film so I'll read that while this image pops up on screen there of the stars team in the Arclay Woods. Um, it says here, returning to the origins of the massively popular Resident Evil franchise, fan and filmmaker Johannes Roberts brings the games to life for a whole new generation of fans. In Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City, once the booming home of pharmaceutical giant Umbrella Corporation, Raccoon City is now a dying Midwestern town. The company's exodus left the city a wasteland, with great evil brewing below the surface. When that evil is unleashed, a group of survivors must work together to uncover the truth behind Umbrella and make it through the night. And then it lists, you know, the, the producers and, and everyone and the cast, obviously. Um, so the website, if you go to it, I'll put a link to it down below. It has this information. It has, uh, you know, um, the, the link to the, the Alice movies, they call them. Uh, it has a gallery of the three photos we've seen so far. It doesn't have this new one yet. But um, I do want to just mention because I've been seeing it a lot, a little bit more than I'm used to. Like over on my Venom vlog on my main channel, I think everyone there is kind of used to me and kind of how I talk and, and how I challenge people and people challenge me. And I, 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 you know, I don't mind it as long as we're all respectful of each other. Although I know sometimes we, myself included, like, we get a little testy with our opinions. Um, we get a little bit too much of on our, on our high horse. Again, uh, I have done that. And even recently, um, the thing is, is I like conversation. I like having conversations with people who seem to be willing to have conversations, but sometimes, and I could be misreading some of you, but sometimes when people come in aggressively and they say that, you know, they have a strong opinion about something and they're very aggressive with it, that to me seems like it steps a little bit beyond a challenge and that makes me think I probably cannot have a conversation with this person. I still will try, but if you ever think I cross the line or speak out of tone or whatever, um, or if I'm not matching my energy in a, in a text form isn't matching yours and you didn't mean it offensively or whatever, like call me out on it, please. Um, certainly have had moments where I've had to put my own foot in my mouth and embarrass myself numerous times. And I mean, hey, I'm human. I, you know, I just look at it as a learning experience and I go, okay, you know what? That's what you get for being hot headed and being a little bit too um, focused on your perspective and not really listening to someone else's perspective. Um, so I'm not a, I'm not above feedback, uh, positive or negative. And I just wanted to let you guys know, like I, I see people coming in with very intense opinions about, you know, the actress who plays Jill or the actor who plays Leon. Again, I just can only give things from my perspective. And as someone who's worked in movies, who has seen a casting process, who has seen people come in for auditions, who has seen all types and all facets of movie and filmmaking from low budget indie films made with friends all the way up to big budget movies like Iron Man 2 and stuff where I was on the set for, um, Get Him to the Greek, a lot of movies over at Sony, Green Hornet and stuff. Like I've seen all of it. I've seen reality TV. I've seen scripted TV. I've seen a lot of stuff, Dancing with the Stars to Pushing Daisies. Like I've, I've had uh, quite the life of working on stuff uh, creatively and I'm very blessed for that and I'm blessed for the perspective it gives me so I can only bring that perspective. I know there are people out there that say, oh, well, the reason Jill is cast with this person and, and uh, you know, the reason Yvonne is playing Leon is because of some kind of agenda or, you know, whatever. You know, I, I understand and I know that there are people out there that exist either in Hollywood or in the casting process or wherever that do have some kind of agenda to, you know, make the cast a little more diverse or, or work, you know, work that in in some way. Again, I always say I don't see agendas as a bad thing. Some people do. Uh, you may have the agenda of casting a white person as Leon. So if someone else has the agenda of not casting a white person as Leon, to me, your arguments are the same. To me, you want a white person, they are open to not having a white person. Uh, so if those are your two agendas, uh, then they're the same. They're both agendas. And I don't think either one is wrong. It all comes down to the filmmakers, the vision they have, and also the wiggle room to interpret. Um, I think a lot of times we as fans get really hung up on these details that we think make the character. But again, I'll argue that I don't think Leon, I don't think his blonde hair defines him as a character. I don't think his race defines him as a character. Same with anyone else. 
if a black guy came in to read for Chris Redfield and he was awesome and they were like, okay, we love this guy. He is a leader. He is um, headstrong. He is uh, focused. He has all these, um, you know, qualities that we think Chris Redfield has from the games, but he's black. Well, we want to cast him because he's good for the role. But now we have to go cast, you know, someone black to play Claire. If that were the case, again, as long as the reason for it is that they embody what the filmmakers are looking for for that character from a from what an actual character is, then I'm happy. Like I always say, we've got a blonde haired Leon before in Resident Evil Retribution. And I'm sorry to that actor, but that he was not good and that movie was awful. Uh, same with the, the young lady who plays Jill. She looks spot on as Jill in Resident Evil Apocalypse, but she's not the greatest actress either, in my opinion. Again, just in my opinion. But I think most of those movies were catered to work around Alice, the character anyway, and it didn't really give anyone else a chance to be a character. So that could be one of the reasons too. But my point is, is that as someone who's worked in comics, as someone who's worked in movies, my perspective is that some things have to change for things to live long lives uh, in fiction. Superman didn't always fly. Uh, he got flying from the radio show, but yet most people, when they think of Superman, think of him flying. But yet a traditionalist will argue that that didn't come from the comic books. He just leaped over tall buildings originally. He did not fly. Uh, same with Kryptonite, came from the radio show, really just to give the actor a week off because he wanted a week off <laughs> from doing the show so much. And so they came up with a weakness for Superman so that way he could just record a couple coughs before he went out of town on vacation. There's a lot of things that go into filmmaking, including stuff like that, including radio shows, TV, everything. So again, for me, I like to see things in motion. Just because someone of a different race is playing a certain character I, I will note it. I'll be like, okay, I notice it, you know, for sure. But I want to see it in action. I want to see the young lady, uh, Hannah, who's playing Jill. I want to see what she's like as Jill, either in a trailer. That'll give me a better understanding. But ultimately, the movie, the final movie, is going to be the, the deciding factor. Once I watch that movie, I'll go, okay, I like her or I don't like her as Jill. But I'm not going to do that based on her skin color. Like, to me, Jill's skin color, again, is not a defining... I mean, it, it's certainly in the game a noticeable trait of hers is that she's white. Uh, but, again, who Jill is as a character is all the stuff that she does. And as a, someone who's written characters and who has seen characters brought to life and translated from video games and comics to movies and novels to movies and stuff firsthand... I'm, I'm telling you, it's it's okay, at least in my eyes, to take a step back and not feel so angry. I think that's the main thing when I see people get really angry about the casting and they go, this is trash because this person looks more like Carlos than they do Leon. Probably, but but Carlos is, a, is not a, a, a rookie police officer and he doesn't have the same journey as Leon does. So... Yes, maybe the guy Ovan looks like Carlos to you, but Carlos has his own story with Jill, you know, uh, and Nemesis, and he learns that he's working for a corrupt organization. He has a different arc, in a sense, as we saw in the remake even, than Leon does. They, they, they end as different characters. Leon's kind of always headstrong and, and kind of uh, altruistic in a way, um, and he just has to balance that throughout the story of, uh, you know, can he save people? Like he's there to be a cop and to rescue people, but he has to learn to let go to an extent because unfortunately most of Raccoon City is already gone by the time he arrives in town. But in this movie, it sounds like from the premise that Ra that maybe Umbrella has kind of left town and their experiments aren't being watched and got out. And now people from different parts of town have to survive to, to escape. I mean, that's just what I'm reading from the premise. The movie could be different. Maybe that's a bad premise. I don't know. Or maybe I'm reading into it wrong. The point is, is that the character arc in this movie for Leon is maybe more of a Leon arc than what it would be if they just called this guy Carlos. Um, so that's my point is like, I think a lot of people just look at a character and go, well, they look more like him, so they should be him. So you can always plan for, hey, I would love someone who looks just like Leon. But as a storyteller, you also should be open-minded enough to notice when talent comes in.
And Ivan Yogia is a talented actor. So it would be hard, I can imagine, to hit, for him to come in and crush an audition and for you to go, okay, I would love to hire the guy, but I can't because he looks nothing like Leon. Like that would be a hard decision to make because then you might settle for someone who looks like Leon, but who's a bad actor. And I think that's my point in all this is that people don't always think about the process of filmmaking when they rip something apart that they don't like. So that's fine. If you, if you still have the opinion after hearing mine that you don't like the casting of Leon and Jill, that's fine. As long as you're respectful here. And the other thing is, I guess, even being more than respectful is just don't feel like you're entitled to that. I, everyone has different opinions. For Resident Evil to last, for, you know, like Superman is an 80-year-old character. The only reason he's still around after 80 years is because they've changed a lot of him over the years. Like, if you like Man of Steel, they changed some good, you know, some stuff about Superman in Man of Steel. So if you're a fan of that, then you are a fan of change. Uh, you know, you're a fan of new interpretations for, for characters. So to me, again, I'm, it's a great cast. This movie is lucky to have this cast. We didn't get this with previous Resident Evil movies. I mean, yeah, I like Ali Larder. She's good and Oded Fair are great, but it was rare. It, you wouldn't get all of them in one movie. That's what we were promised at one point was the sixth movie was gonna have, you know, everyone in it at some point. Uh, and instead, and they brought a lot of people back for the fifth one, but they just came back and played clones of themselves and it was a real mess. This, I saw the filming of this movie, not in person, but like through images and through video. And, you know, now we get all these, you know, uh, you know uh, articles and interviews with these people, you know, the director and stuff who loves to come out and talk about this movie and seeing that kind of passion and seeing him actually dissect things from a, uh, from a deeper level than what Paul Anderson did. Paul Anderson's like, oh, I want a bunch of doors to open in the movie because in the game you open doors all the time. It's like, really? That's the, that's the thing you want to focus on? You hack director? Uh, <laughs> so... To me, it seems like Johannes is, is actually putting in an effort that I at least don't feel was there before. And that's why I'm willing to give this movie a chance. So if you agree with that, disagree with that, whatever it is, like I said, let me know down below. I'm older than probably a lot of you that, you know, write in and comment and stuff like I'm nearing 40. So I get it. I'm just some dumb old guy you probably don't care about, uh, but that's fine. I mean, I'm not here to like really to sway anyone's opinion or to to change minds or anything. I'm just trying to offer my perspective into the things I talk about. Um, but I understand you all come from a very different perspective. And if you want to share that in your opinion down below, feel free to do it. And uh, I'll put my armor on because some of y'all have been, uh, well, you've been pretty easy on me compared to what I've seen on other channels for sure. Uh, Cause I'm still a small channel here, but, um, but some of you are, you do come in aggressive with your opinions and, uh, and, I mean, that's fine, but just uh, expect a little bit of aggression back. I like, if you're gonna challenge me that hard, I'm probably gonna challenge you back that hard. Uh, but I'll probably make mistakes like I did recently, um, but it's fine. It's like, I, I'm here to grow too as a person and uh, and I'm not a, above admitting um, when I make a mistake for sure. So uh, anyway, that's just my thoughts on, on the, the Res Evil fandom and like my opinion on stuff and why I'm looking at this movie through the lens that I am and why I'm exploring it the way that I'm exploring it. Like, I don't believe in just looking at it and going trash. I believe in looking at something and going, okay, like Jill's suit, it, it almost looks like a onesie with a jacket on, like a little vest thing over it. I don't know if I'm digging that too much, but we'll see how it is in movement, if it's practical, if it helps Hannah move around, you know, uh, if she can spin, you know, I don't want to see her doing spinning moves like Alice, but if she can like spin around a corner with her gun out and, you know, get, get the one up on a zombie or something like I, I want to see it in motion, of course, um, and uh, and I, I just, off of still images, you can get a sense of maybe where they're going, but it, for me, I always need to see the movement and the actions and hear their voices, and that will help me form a, a stronger opinion on whether I think they're good for the character or not. So for now, I'm just on standby. I'm just reporting the images as they come out and hearing your thoughts on them and sharing what I think so far, but until a trailer comes out, I probably won't actually dissect the characters until I actually hear their voices and hear them in action and, and see if they're even emoting in any way the characters from the video game, um, or at least some some strong version that's reminiscent to them. Um, so anyway, that's it. Rant over. Thanks so much for watching the show as always. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in Raccoon City. Peace.